What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops Cold War. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering the QBZ-83 Assault Rifle. And with this one, we get a damage profile of 3228, which means, just like most of the assault rifles, it's going to be a 5-6 to six shot kill. Additionally, just like with all of the other assault rifles, there are no body multipliers that change the damage for shooting different body parts. We do, however, get a headshot multiplier of 1.4, and this takes our headshot damage profile to 4439. Now, what this means is in the maximum damage range, it's going to take you two headshots mixed in with two body shots if you want to get a four shot kill. Whereas at the longer ranges, you just need one headshot mixed in with body shots to reduce the number of shots to kill. So with this gun, I would say headshots are moderately effective, but they're not as effective as like the Krig, for instance, which only requires one headshot mixed in with body shots. As for our rate of fire, this is right in between the other two 5-shot kill assault rifles, the Krig 6 and the XM4, at 681 rounds per minute. And this means our time to kill is 352 milliseconds in the 5-shot kill range. And this time to kill value is a little bit on the slow side, it's not quite as slow as the XM4, but it is below average in this area for assault rifles. Now, as for a situation where we manage to land two headshots mixed in with body shots, this will cut it down to a four-shot kill, and this would give us a time to kill value of 264 milliseconds, which is a very fast time to kill. So if you can manage landing those two headshots mixed in with body shots, I would definitely go for it with this gun. But next up, let's have a look at our bullet velocity, and compared to the other assault rifles, it is on the faster side, tied with the Krig and the FFAR. However, even at 625 meters per second, it is nice to boost this value a little bit more so that this gun will feel more like a hit scan, especially at longer ranges. Speaking of ranges, as you can see here, our 5-shot kill potential extends out to about 47 meters, which is a very solid range value. On most of the 6v6 maps, you'll be just fine without any attachments that are boosting your range. But if you wanted to, you could add any one of these barrels, which gives you a huge increase to your damage range, and then you'll never have to worry about dropping off to a 6-shot kill. But I also wanted to show you what suppressors will do to this, and you can see here that a regular suppressor is a 15% reduction, whereas the agency suppressor is a 33% reduction on this gun. As for hardcore, the QBZ is always a one-shot kill in hardcore modes, unless you're shooting through something or unless your enemy has armor, and I would say this is actually a very underrated gun for hardcore modes. This is one of the best guns you can use in hardcore. But this brings us to our hip fire, and the QBZ does have the worst hip fire in the assault rifle category, as you can see. It's just a little bit worse than all of the other ones, so definitely something to keep in mind while using this. Then taking a look at our idle sway, there is very little idle sway while aiming down sight with this, and this means you can be quite precise with your shots at longer ranges. And now let's get into the recoil, which as you can see, the recoil is very straightforward. It's almost straight vertical recoil. There's a slight lean to the left. And it's also really consistent. There's no big jumps or anything with the recoil. It's just nice and simple, pretty much straight upwards. And when we compare this with all of the other assault rifles in the game currently, I actually consider this to be the most accurate and easy to control recoil pattern out of all of them. Even though it has a bit of a higher magnitude than the Krig or the AK-47, there's less side-to-side -side movement and it moves in basically a straight line rather than a bit of a curved line. So yeah, the QBZ is an incredibly accurate gun. On top of this, our handling is great as well. It has the fastest base aim down sight time out of all of the assault rifles at 283 milliseconds. All of the other ones are 300 milliseconds. And then our experience sprint out time in game is 266 milliseconds, which is pretty standard for the assault rifles. As for our reload add time, this is right around average for the assault rifles at 1.59 seconds. So it's not super fast, but it's also not slow by any means. Also, of course, our reload time will change depending on the magazine that we're using, and these are all of the reload times with the different magazines. And this brings us into our movement speed, which is quite unique with this gun. It's sort of like a hybrid between an SMG and an assault rifle when it comes to movement speed. So our base movement speed is 97.5%, whereas all of the other assault rifles are 95%. And this little boost applies to our sprint movement speed as well. This is faster than all of the other assault rifles. And our aim down sight movement speed is also faster than all of the assault rifles. It's only by a small margin, but it is faster. And with that, that pretty much covers it for the basic stats of the QBZ-83. Now let's move into the strengths and weaknesses. And when it comes to strengths, we've got a lot of really good strengths with this gun. I could even add more to this list, honestly, but it's got the best aim down sight time out of all of the assault rifles. It's got the best movement speed out of all of the assault rifles, so in some ways it's kind of like a hybrid with an SMG. However, we still maintain really good recoil properties as well. So not only do you get the benefits of faster handling and mobility, you still maintain great accuracy while doing that. 
As for the weaknesses, obviously it has the worst hip fire in the assault rifle category, as we've already covered, so that's just something to be aware of while using this gun. And also, it does have an above average time to kill, and by above, I mean the time is above average, and therefore that's not a good thing. It does kill a little bit on the slow side when you compare it to other guns like the AK-47, for instance. And honestly, I feel like that's the only thing that's holding this back from being the best assault rifle in the game. If it had a faster time to kill, it would be practically untouchable by any other assault rifle, but that's what keeps it in check. And this is where I want to move into the 15 and a half inch task force barrel. I've been covering this with all of the assault rifles. It's the barrel that boosts your damage, and therefore I get questioned about it quite a bit. Is it worth using? Well, with the QBZ, it boosts our damage profile to 3430, which means now it's always going to be a five shot kill, even at longer ranges. However, up close, where you should be challenging your gunfights most of the time, it's still going to be a five shot kill, and this is where we get into the headshot multiplier. Our headshots are now going to be 4742, and when you do the math on this, this doesn't actually change the number of headshots required to kill up close. You still need to hit two of the bullets to the head and two to the body if you want a four shot kill, and since this barrel massively increases your recoil, there's really no benefit to using this barrel at all, and I would say avoid this one at all costs on the QBZ. And with that, it's finally time to move into some great attachment combinations and example class setups that I have for you guys. And the first class setup following suit with the previous gun guides, I really like using a stealth build. So that's what the first one's going to be. And with this, of course, we're using a suppressor so we can stay off the radar. We're using the 16 and a half inch Ranger barrel to boost our bullet velocity because our range is totally fine as is. So I don't feel like I need to use any barrels to boost that. I would rather just boost my bullet velocity as much as possible here. Then we're using the Infiltrator Grip. This is the one that helps with our movement speed, our shooting movement speed, and our aim walking movement speed. So it's just sort of taking what's already good about the QBZ and making it even better. So this actually moves faster than SMGs at this point. But then we have the SAS Mag Clamp for our mag. That's the one that gives us a really, really quick reload time. And then finally, the Airborne Elastic Wrap, just because this attachment is amazing on all of the assault rifles. So with this, taking a look at some of the key values, our range is reduced to 38 meters, but with this sort of setup, most of my fights will be well within 38 meters anyway, so that's fine by me. Our velocity is massively boosted, so it's definitely going to feel like a hit scan gun within the ranges we'll be challenging people. Our reload time is super, super fast. Sprint out time is a little on the slow side, and it's something you've got to be aware of. It's about 300 milliseconds, but our aim down sight time is just 215 milliseconds, which is quite fast and snappy. And taking this into the rest of the class setup here, we're using a 1911 with a suppressor on there, just to stick with that off the radar sort of theme. We've got a stim shot, semtex, and field mic. Our perks, we're going to be using perk greed. These are sort of my standard perks that I use on many of my classes. Flak jacket, tack mask, assassin scavenger, and ninja and ghost. So that's a great stealth build for being relatively aggressive and flanking your enemies. You've got amazing handling and movement speed while maintaining the benefits of having an assault rifle. It's a very accurate gun. You can stretch the range out pretty far if you wanted to with this. And yeah, just a great all around sort of setup. Now let's move into the second setup that I have. And with this one, we are using the gunfighter wildcard. So we're maxing out our attachments here. And with this, we have the Microflex LED, which I just really like the looks of that optic. We've got the muzzle brake to help a bit with our recoil, since we're going to be hanging back with this setup a bit more. And going along with that, we've got the 15 and a half inch reinforced heavy barrel, which gives us a little bit of bullet velocity, but it also doubles our effective damage range. Now, on top of this, we have that bruiser grip, which helps a lot with our movement speeds, which again, it's just capitalizing on what's already good about the QBZ and making it even better. We've got the 40 round speed mag, the tactical stock, Steady aim laser to help make up for that bad hip fire that we have. And then finally, once again, that airborne elastic wrap. And with this, you can see our range properties are ridiculous for the 6v6 maps in this game at 90 meters. Our velocity isn't amazing, but it's definitely manageable. There's nothing wrong with that bullet velocity. Reload time's pretty quick, especially considering the fact that we also have a larger magazine. Sprint out time is, once again, fairly slow with this setup. But our aim down sight time is pretty fast at 255 milliseconds. And taking this one into an example class setup, we've got the Gallo shotgun as our secondary. We've got a stun grenade, a Semtex, and an assault pack. That one's kind of key for this setup since we aren't going to be using Scavenger. Then we've also got forward intel because we're going to be hanging back and picking people off with this class setup. So it's great to have that larger minimap coverage. Then we've got gearhead so we can get those assault packs even faster. And then finally ninja because I hate hearing my own footsteps. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the QBZ-83. Personally, I think this gun is very underrated. I don't see people using it all that often, and I don't really know why, because it's a really good gun. The only thing that really holds it back is the time to kill isn't incredible, 
but it's also not bad by any means. So if you guys haven't played around with this gun very much, I definitely encourage you to put some time in with it because I feel for a lot of you, you're missing out on a great gun. Of course, that is just my opinion, and I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of the QBZ-83? If you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.